when you're insulin resistant, that is, you've got metabolic syndrome, pretty much every chemical in the body is not quite right. Some are up, some are down, few are actually at physiologically normal levels. Traditionally, the focus is on the big guns, sugar, insulin, and cholesterol. In this series, we take a look at some of the other players, who they are, what they're up to, and how they're part of the state of insulin resistance. In this episode, we don't look at a specific molecule, but at a state of being. If you're insulin resistant, odds are you have fatty liver. Now, you can have fatty liver without metabolic syndrome. Too much alcohol, viral infections, several commonly used drugs and supplements, hypothyroidism, and bad genes can all cause liver cells to accumulate too much fat. But metabolic syndrome is the biggest driver. In fact, there's a school of thought that thinks fatty liver alters the paracrine and endocrine functions of the liver to cause insulin resistance. The condition is considered to be a hepatic manifestation of metabolic syndrome, and there are moves afoot to give it a new name, MAFLD. Currently, it's called NAFLD, which stands for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, to distinguish it from alcoholic fatty liver disease. Metabolic associated fatty liver disease differentiates it from environmental and genetic conditions, and it has a lot less stigma than non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. The thing about fatty liver is odds are you won't know you have a problem until you have a big problem, namely liver disease. By this time, your liver is in serious trouble and may be beyond redemption. The condition starts off slowly. At first, liver cells are carrying a little extra fat. This is called steatosis. It's not ideal, but not hugely problematic. The liver is still able to do the gazillions of reactions it's tasked with. But it can create a little angst. One problem that often arises is portal hypertension. That is, the blood pressure is high in the blood vessel that connects the gut with the liver. Now, this increase in pressure causes damage to the endothelial cells. These are the cells that surround blood vessels. And they turn a little bolshy, making it harder for the liver cells to process new arrivals. Damage happens, precipitating the enlistment of the immune system to clean up. At this stage, the situation is described as NASH. The reference to hepatitis reflects the fact that the liver is inflamed. But generally speaking, the liver muddles through it. There are changes in liver chemistry, but the liver is still able to do its job. If this situation goes on for too long, the damage gets to a point where liver function starts diminishing. There is an ongoing attempt to fix the problem, resulting in a stiffening of the liver, which is referred to as fibrosis. At this point, liver function starts to be obviously compromised, and when there's enough damage, you're considered to have liver chirosis and you are well on your way to liver failure or liver cancer. So fatty liver is something that should be on your radar and something you should be actively working to alleviate. So how do you know if you've got it? Well, your doctor has to take a look, literally. To confirm you have a problem, a piece of liver needs to be extracted and looked at by a pathologist. Elevated liver enzymes are usually the trigger to take a deeper look. But ironically, these can often be normal. Some livers are tough cookies. The appearance of fat in the liver on an ultrasound is another sign of trouble. Unfortunately, there has to be quite a bit of fat in the liver before it's spotted. A do-it-yourself measure you can use to assess your situation is the Tai Chi index. It's not perfect, but it uses values from standard blood work. A number greater than four suggests a problem. So, what's going on? Well, liver cells work hard. They're the hub that connects the inside of the body with the outside. Their job is to sort through the blood that arrives from the intestine and decide what to do with all those goodies. 
Do we need it? Should we dispatch it? Should we keep it? Should we toss it? Does it need to be neutralized? The process of evaluating happens in the liver sinusoids. The hepatocytes are lined up behind the blood vessels which receive blood from the hepatic artery and the hepatic portal vein. Now each liver cell can pretty much do anything, but where they find themselves in the line determines what they actually do. Cells at the start of the line are more concerned with clearing. Cells at the end of the line focus their attention on storing. So as a rule, when fatty liver happens in MAFLD, these are the cells that get fat first. Now the liver stores lots of things, among them carbohydrates and fat. When it comes to carbs, the first mission of the liver is to replenish its own sugar supplies. The glucose is grabbed and then transformed into glycogen. A percentage of the glucose is allowed to circulate. Any excess must be transformed to fat, contributing to the fat accumulation in the liver. The process is called de novo lipogenesis. But this is not the only fat the liver is storing and processing. In fact, in the big picture of things, this is a relatively small fraction of the fat being handled by the liver. Most of the fat is coming in from dinner and or from fat stores particularly visceral adipose tissue or belly fat. In fact, the liver is a fat processing machine. Enormous amounts flow through the liver. When fatty liver happens, it's because fat flux is compromised. And the jam is not always on the supply side. Part of the problem is less fat is being used by the liver, both personally and professionally. And there are glitches in the exporting thanks to wayward signaling and resource issues. It turns out the fats have to be wrapped in a special kind of bubble wrap, which requires methyl groups. When methyl groups are in short supply, this can put a damper on exports. In fact, creating methyl shortages is the go-to method of giving rodents fatty liver disease. Modern diets are often choline insufficient. So, can your doctor stop it? Well, the short answer is no. Not right now. There's no pill that addresses the issue, although there are lots of pharmaceutical companies looking. Right now, if you want to do something about it, and you do, you've got to take the initiative. Fortunately, quite a few things can move the needle on the fat equation. As always, in insulin resistance, it's an insulin problem. So reining in insulin is step number one. Download the Willpower Report. It's free for tips and strategies to get started. Sending in less fat will also help. Now the best way to do this is to lose the excess weight, one way or another. Reducing fructose, especially liquid fructose, will also help. On the fat outside of things, you want to work at shifting your body chemistry to burn more fat and make sure you are providing the needed resources for fat shipments. Finally, don't stress your liver by drinking too much alcohol. Here are a few of the journal articles I've used to tell the fatty liver story. Fatty liver is the hepatic manifestation of metabolic syndrome. It's just one of hundreds of things in the body that are amiss when you're insulin resistant. Subscribe to our channel to learn more about some of the other players in the ups and downs of insulin resistance series. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.